are now listening to the Molten Fantasy Sports Podcast. We are back for another episode of Team Previews. And today we're covering the Manly Sea Eagles. I'm your host, the Super Coach Brain, and I'm joined as always by the Super Coach Matrix. Matty, how you been, mate? Yeah, good, good. It's been a couple of days. There's been a couple of trials, and um, yeah, can you get stuck in? It's crazy that uh, Manly finished lower than the Dragons. It is crazy. When we were talking about that last time, I know that we were a bit surprised that Dragons popped up 10th. So I was expecting, and I prepared my Manly notes earlier than the Dragons. Yeah. But uh, here we are, finished 11th. Um, mate, what we'll do as always, we, we usually move through the lineups pretty quickly. Um, we'll have a look at the gains and the losses for Manly, the buys, and then we'll move into our booms, bust, cheapies, smokies, and uh, assess the super coach hopes, I think, of the of the Manly Sea Eagles, and we'll crack some tins. Perfect timing, little segue Let's there. Let's do it. Yeah, no, segue. Let's go. Beautiful, beautiful. Mate, so um, Manly Sea Eagles, there's a bit of movement, player movement. Um, so Ben Condon, not super relevant, kind of the Cowboys, Zach Fulton, Cooper Johns, Nathaniel Roach, and Kelma Tuolungi are the players that they've gained. Tuolungi is probably the only talking point that we'll mention today. Uh, and 2023 losses for the Manly Sea Eagles, they've lost Andrew Davey, which I think is a pretty big loss for them. They love Andrew Davey, and I know that he's actually high on the stocks over there at Bulldogs. Uh, they've lost Sione Finu. They've lost Kieran Foran, which is a, a pretty big talking point. He's uh, touted to obviously take the Gold Coast into uh, immortality over there, which we know is not going to happen. Uh, they've lost... Build a statue. Yeah, that's right, mate. He's, he's got about six statues from all the 11th place finishes from the last <laughs> six or seven years. Um, mate, uh, they've lost George Tafua over to the Super League. Marty Tapao is a big talking point to your Broncos, mate. He's gone over there. And then they've also lost Dylan Walker to the New Zealand Warriors. So there's a bit of player movement for the Manly Sea Eagles. Yeah, um, they're one of those teams that actually got worse. <laughs> yeah, I mean, look, we, it's hard to look at a team and go, yeah, they got worse. And they've got Tommy Turbo, they've got Ruben Garrick, they've got Schuster, Cherry Evans, and they've got... Uh, Hamoli Olakowatu and Jake Tabroyevich. So when we look at their team, we think they should have definitely finished better than the 11th last year. Do you agree? Yeah, yeah, I I agree. They did get knocked around with injury, though, and any team that didn't have, uh, you know, their highest paid player playing uh, are going to finish 11th. So. 100%. It's, it's tough. It's tough. Obviously, Tommy Turbo had a, a pretty rough run last year, and we're hoping that he that he pulls it together. So, again, kicking off these team lists is Tommy Turbo at the back, at, at fullback, um, priced at 577. Uh, we've got on the wings, we've got Christian Toipolotu, who had a bit of a breakout year last year. Uh, and we've got Ruben Garrick, uh, who will likely line up on the left wing, Tuipolotto on the right, if they stick to last year, which makes sense. We've got uh, Tolotau Kola and Brad Parker in the centres. Josh Schuster and Cherry Evans in the halves. We've got Josh Alloyer and Taniella Paseka at prop. We've got Lachlan Croker in the hooker position. We've got Tuolungi and we've got Ola Kawatu in the edges. And we've got Jake Trebojevic at lock. Uh, some similar things. We'll touch on the changes soon. Uh, and then on the bench, a predicted bench for us, I think we've got uh, Benny Turbo, Benny Trebojevic. We've got Tuafoa Sipley, uh, Sean Kepi and Ethan Bullimore. Uh, and another player I guess is relevant in conversation is probably Cooper Johns, who I can actually see make his way into that 17 at some point next year. Definitely when obviously Cherry Evans is away for origin duties. Um, mate, how do you see these guys going this year, Manly? Where do you see them finishing? Yeah, I've got them at eighth only because I'm banking on with my team, and we'll talk about it later, uh, Tommy Turbo playing. Um, so, yeah, I think if Turbo plays, then, then they'll be in the top eight. Uh, I think if they're... Riddled with injury again, they'll be much where they were. Yeah, again, we we spoke in the Souths pod about them being very heavily reliant on probably two to three very key players for their lineup, and I think Manly sit in that category as well. Manly honestly could finish as high as fourth, or they could finish as low as fifteenth. I think there's a, a very obvious. Um, reliance on one specific player. But again, we can't ignore guys like Cherry Evans and Garrick, uh, who are very instrumental to this team. So, um, mate, let's uh, let's touch on the buys first, because I think this is relevant to the conversation we're about to have about Manly. They've got a buy in round two. Now, has that affected the way that you've approached uh, your super coach team in terms of getting Manly players in? Uh, it hasn't. Uh, it's not going to affect a 240k in Josh Schuster because I'm probably not playing him anyway. Mm -hmm. 
Turbo, I can just see him banging out 140 or not playing, and I'm not going to waste the trade to get him in. Yeah, fair shout. Fair shout. That's, um, that makes sense. Mate, let's move into our booms. Um, yeah, mate, play I the might, tune. I might let you kick us off. Boom shakalaka! Yeah, so uh, from day dot, I've had Turbo. I loaded into the app and I added Turbo. I can't believe that the discussion around the Supercoach community is to not have him. Uh, He's only 34% owned. He can cover his break even on one leg. He's priced on a 55 average, which is absolutely... Oh, no, he's priced on a 61 average. Um, No, you're right. You're right the first time. He's priced on 55. Because of injury and minimal games, they they basically priced him down on his average. Which is which which is absolutely insane. Like imagine if any time in the last two years and Turbo was playing, they said that you can have one of the best players in Supercoach at a fifty percent discount. Um, let's not overthink it. Let's not get too cute with it. Let's just get the best player in your team for legit fifty cents to the dollar. Like five hundred and seventy seven K. That's Adam Elliott money. Like I can't believe there's an actual conversation around not having turbo in your team. If you ask people this in 2021, they'd laugh at you. Imagine, imagine saying in 2021, they come up to you and they go, Oh, you know, the Tommy turbo in two years time is going to be priced at 585,000. Whatever. What's the price that he's at at the moment? 577. (laughs) So imagine if they came up to you in 2021 when the bloke averaged 143 and he eclipsed 1 million in the super coach world. I think he was one of the first to do it aside from Nathan Cleary. Like, absolute insanity to pick him up at that price. So he's in my team as well. Um, And I agree with everything you just said. The only reason that I've gone in a different direction is because I wanted to create a talking point for this episode. And I think that Hamoli Olakawatu could have an improved year based on last year. And and people are probably sitting there thinking, wow, like how this guy's had a career year. How's he going to do that? Now, let's keep in mind, he averaged 65 last season, the full year. Now, that's a career year for Ola Kawatu, and, and for good reason. The guy's an absolute gun. Um, and he linked up with Cherry Evans extremely well on that right edge. Now, he averaged 71 at round 18, and then uh, good old Jersey Gate kicked in. And <laughs> ever since uh, ever since we went through that little turmoil there, his last six games he finished with an average of 50.1. So if he, can, if he continued with that 71 average, I think everybody – like. First of all, he'd be priced at probably mid 700s. Um, so at the moment, he's priced at 682. So I reckon he'd probably be priced at 750 minimum if he continued that form at the back end of the year. But he saved us some money. Um, so we probably should thank Manly for that. Um, <laughs> after that, thank Jersey Gate. Thank Jersey yeah, Gate. Thanks, Jersey Gate, for actually uh, decreasing Ola Kawatu's price, mate. I'm a big fan. I had him last year. I went his option as a pod and it really helped me. He had an absolute cracker of a year. I think I captained him when he got that. I think he was on like 90 in the first half or something like that. I can't remember who it was against probably tigers knowing, knowing, <laughs> All knowing, the Kawatu, or knowing anybody that does well against uh, any team. It's got to be my team. So um, I like the connection he's got. He scored 10 tries last year. I don't think that's an anomaly. I think he can do that again with the linking up with, with Ola Kawatu, uh, with uh, DCE. But also, we need to remember that Kelmatu Alangi, who's probably someone you're going to talk about, I think, uh, is going to be on the left edge, is less experienced. I feel like they're going to use that right side a lot more this year. So so I'm a big fan of Olakawatu. I think he can probably outdo what he did last year. Yeah, he was great. He was a bloke that I wanted all year and then got him when he was underperforming. So I'm a little bit burnt by him. Uh, but yeah, I spent, you know, 17, 18 rounds just wanting him in my team. Fair call. Mate, let's move on. So uh, next is your Smokey, and I'll let you take it away. Yeah, Brayno mentions like every 25 minutes that any bloke coming from the Tigers are a chance for a breakout year after they leave. Uh, He knew he was leaving last year, and he just stunk it up. Uh, He signed a three-year contract with Manly. Uh, You don't sign a guy to a three-year contract unless you plan to use him. Uh, let's not exhort 
ignore his terrible 0.6 ppm that he had last year. Let's embrace it. We get to a large year to discount because if we take a trip down memory lane back to 2021, uh, he averaged like 1.4 ppm. Uh, Manly are better than the West Tigers were last year. Uh, just keep an eye on Kelma. He's, I'm not going to start the year with him, but I'm just going to keep an eye on him. Uh, he's coming off, you know, coming sitting outside Daily Cherry Evans now. Should be good. Should be good. Yeah, uh, my, my opinion is he's sitting outside Josh Usa. Um, I'm going to save my little spiel for, for Tuolungi um, a little bit later, and um, we'll, we'll touch on him then. But, no, I, I can see the appeal. I can see the appeal. Um, mate, my Smokey is a guy that actually had a relatively slow start to last year. Um, everybody would have started with him. Everybody would have thought this guy's going to be the next gun. He's <laughs> going to be the next guy that's going to make me 400K, and he didn't. Uh, he actually didn't score a try for the first 13 rounds, and I'm talking about Tolatau Kola. Um, but he scored six tries to finish the year. So we saw as soon as he got over the line that first time, this, this confidence just came about him. He just thought, hang on, all right, I can do this. I'm, I'm sweet now. You know, it was just getting the monkey off the back. Um, he averaged uh, 33 up until round 13. Everyone's absolutely pulling their hair out. I know I bailed on him at about round eight um, <laughs> because I, I can't remember what I did with him exactly, but I know that it got me to a better position. Um, so he averaged 33 to around 13, and then he averaged 50.2 for the rest of the year from there. As soon as he knocked over that first try, he got on a bit of momentum. We started to see him make a couple of line breaks. And this is keep in mind without Tom Trebojevic in the team, without the space on the field. I know Ruben Garrick did a great job filling in for Tom Trebojevic, but we need to keep in mind that Tommy Turbo is one of the best fullbacks in the game. And uh, he creates this space that just doesn't seem there. Everyone has to make sure they've got their eyes on him. And that might free up some opportunities for guys on the edges like Kola, like Ola Kawatu, um, which is the two guys that I've mentioned today as, uh, as my boom and my smoky. Explosive runner, good evade stats. Um, and I do feel like he can improve in 2023 with Turbo Fit. Thoughts? Yeah, ex- exciting. Uh, I won't be touching uh, to Pilotu and, and Kula. I took my price rise. I'm bailing. I know it's over two years, but yeah, I'll be looking for somebody that was the price Cooler was last year and yeah, ride him to the same price. Yeah. Cooler and there's was plenty of options. Last year. Yeah. Yeah. I, w- I won't be looking at it. I think, you know, they have to, they have to slide Garrick back into the, uh, to the, to the wing out there and yeah, I won't be touching those guys. So yeah, cool. Um, as we yeah. always do, we move through Boom Smokies and let's move on to the guys we don't think are going to do as well this this year. It's yeah, you know from me. <laughs> yeah, you were uh, you were hitting up uh, to a Lagi there. Let us know what you think. Yeah, I'm going to go against you. I'm going to go against your your guy Kelma Tuolangi. I don't know whether I'm it's because I'm a burnt Tigers fan <laughs> or whether it's because I genuinely don't feel like he's got it in him. Um, and look, I, I'm very aware, and you mentioned at the start, that we do know that pl- players that come from the Tigers always improve. Um, I don't know whether he's going to. I don't know whether he's going to improve. Just watching him last year, he just didn't look like he wanted to be involved. And I don't know whether that's whether he's carrying injuries. He had HIA issues last year as well. I think he had three HIA issues um, in the first five or six weeks where his minutes were cut back, which is obviously where you saw that big drop in price. Um, look, PPM of 1.4, you mentioned that in, in 2021, he had a really high PPM, but we need to keep in mind that's a really tiny sample size. He only played five games that season. So, and he only played, I think it was 30 to 40 minutes in those games and he bashed out 50 plus, which is where that PPM's come from. So when we get the bigger sample size of when he's playing 65 minutes in 22 games last year, so he's basically played every single game and he's played more than 75% of the minutes on the Tigers field. He averaged 0.6 PPM. And I think that's a larger sample size. That's something we need to take into consideration. And especially if he's playing on the less favoured edge, opposite Cherry Evans, who always plays on the right, and he links up with Ola Kawatu, I feel like the only draw card to that left edge is going to be Ruben Garrick. So they're going to be focusing on getting the ball to Garrick, which means that either the ball's going to go from Schuster to centre to winger, or it's going to go from Schuster and it's going to probably be this miraculous no-look cutout pass that's going to get intercepted and go the full length of the field. Um, so, yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know whether he's got the work rate, to be honest. Uh, and that's that's me personally. I think he's going to be a bust. I'm, I'm going yeah. to go with a bust, and, and I don't see him breaking 500K. That's my personal opinion. Yeah, cool. It 
it adds up, and you would have watched him a lot more than me last year, so that Mate, wouldn't have I, been hard. Yeah, I don't know whether I did, to be <laughs> honest. <laughs> I didn't really want to watch too many Tigers games. But anyway, that's all right. We'll push on. Yeah, no, that's... Um, yeah, I've mate, got a bit of a weird bust, actually. Okay, um, I don't it. think I've ever had a 200k bust, but here we go. Um, dual position, Viliama Fafita should not be 11% owned. He has a cool name, and I think that's uh, what makes people add him. Like, do they think that they're accidentally adding Viliami Kikau or David Fafita? Um, yeah, they maybe they just think that they can use him for the VC loop, and they can. Um, but with the Dolphins entering the comp now, uh, we now have bots. And we get to use that, you know, to loop one of the guys that have a buy. So if you've got a well-spread-out team, nine times out of ten, you're just going to have a guy that's on a buy. I'm not going to waste a spot on a bloke that won't play uh, when that spot can be generating cash. If all these guys have the inside oil and he jags a bench spot, then fantastic. But until I see real proof that this is going to happen, uh, the man is as much of a myth as Jack Howarth. Good point. Yeah, eleven percent. Eleven percent owned. He's more owned yeah, that's than insane. Angus Brighton up until last night. Like crazy. <sighs> that is insane. Um, there's so many better options. And it, look, if you watch the Tigers trial and you don't take into consideration they got thrashed by thirty six by the New Zealand Warriors in a trial <laughs> game, um, you're looking at Stefano or Tuiko Manu, and you're getting him in your team, and you're paying the extra hundred k and you're shifting Viliami Fafita out into the New South Wales Cup where, he, where he's going to pretty much spend the majority of the year. So oh, If you're playing you New him, South Wales, get him out. maybe they thought they were playing New South Wales Cup super coach, So Could have been. Could have been, mate. Could have been. Um, no, I agree. I agree. Good shout. Mate, but, cheapies. Yeah, well, I've spoke about one cheapie that you shouldn't have, um, but Manly actually produced great cheapies. Uh, last year they had Cooler and Tupelotu. Uh, they really fit the mould, and I had them both. Um, I agree with Schuster, but digging a bit deeper, if Kepi can jag a starting spot or play decent meet, minutes, he's a great cheaper option at that dismal front row forward spot. Um, yeah, Stefano popped onto the scene about an hour ago. Um, but, yeah, look, why are people paying 528 k for Jake Trebojevic when Kepi's half the price um, and has been banging out 0.8 and 1 ppm for the last couple of years? Um, Kepi's a better option, I think. Um, well, until that injury, then say Davy Gravy, uh, Moali, or some of those other cheap players that we've seen at this position. Like, I think he's going to get more opportunity than, say, our mate Pele. And I've got him on my roster at the moment. So, yeah, I just yeah. think we need to keep an eye on him. Um, yeah, Kepi could be a real play this year. Would you say, Matty, that that's a Robbie K watch this space for Kepi? It, right now, it's a Robbie K watch this space. I like it. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to have I'm, a CC for Kepi. him later. Yep. Love it. Uh, mate, my my cheapie is going to be Josh Schuster. Now, I don't need <laughs> to talk about him too much. I don't need to talk about him too much. It's a 60, I think a 60.9% of uh, super coaches are on top of Schuster already because it's the obvious option. It, it just makes sense. There, there shouldn't be a team in super coach that goes without Josh Schuster. Whether you use him at 5'8", or whether you use him in the second row, he's got dual. He averaged 61 in 2021. And, and I know before everybody jumps down my throat and says, scores were elevated in 2021. I understand that. But 61 in 2021, as a left edge second rower, he's got his hands on the ball less. Um, it's not exactly like Kieran Foran was training the house down or playing the house down. Like it, it's, I feel like him stepping in and, and actually being given this 5'8 role could really help him with his confidence because it just looked like he was down on confidence and down on fitness last year. Um, I feel like he can take a step up this year. And, and when you look at what he's priced at, what's the cost? 260 Oh, 240 240 <laughs> mate. It's basement price. That's 40 k off taking a guy like Cam Pereira in center wing. Yeah. Um, with a guy that has that backing and the guy that's averaged 60 plus in a full season of NRL, you take him and you don't look back. So that's, that's a no brainer. So if you don't have, um, Schuster in the team, you're probably not listening to this podcast, but if you, if there's a miracle that you are, you need to get him in your team. You need to shift out whoever you've got there to, to get him in. You know what? I actually don't think Josh Schuster will play that well. I think he looks a bit overweight at the moment. I don't think he's that good, but at 240k that's playing in 
what I think will be a better team than last year. I can't not – I'm too scared not to own him. Like, if he was 400K, I would be rethinking it. But at 240K, if he ends up at 400K, I'm still happy. And 400K is probably, for a starting uh, 5.8, th- would be disappointing, really. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Mate, there, there's much worse options. You take the cash, you take the price, eh, you know that, that there's pedigree there. You just run with that. And then, look, if it doesn't work out, you find another GP that you move into sideways. It's not a big deal. Um, Do mate, you have him in your second row or your 5'8"? Just curious. I've got him in my second row. So I've got Dewey and Burton both in my 5'8 at the moment. I'm going double premium 5'8". Um, I feel like there's a lot of points to be scored in the 5'8 position this year, especially with guys like Bo- uh, Dewey and, and Burton underpriced, I feel. Um, so that's the way I'm running. What about you? I had him in 5.8 up until probably a day or two ago um, because I agree with exactly what you said. 5.8 uh, is too good of a spot to to not have two guys that you're going to be playing every week. So, Yep. Last but not least, mate, hot take. Everyone loves these hot takes, I think, because uh, there's a few comments in the YouTube that are talking about our hot takes. So, uh, mate, kick us off. Yeah, give me the hot sauce. Um, Tommy Turbo will at some stage throughout the year be worth more than 900K. And might not only be your best player, but he might also be your best cash cow. Yeah, actually, that's not a bad shout. I mean, he's starting at what five seventy seven. He could easily get to nine hundred plus. Yeah, easily. even if he gets even if he gets to eight hundred, like you're talking about cash cows that make you three hundred k. This is a guy that you can play every week. Might be your best player and might make you the most amount of money out of any player you own. It's a no brainer. Yep, I'm going to go and say that Turbo doesn't miss a game due to injury. In 2023. So whether he starts in round one or not, I think we spoke about this a few podcasts ago when we are talking about our teams and why we had Turbo. Um, with Manly having the buy around two, there is a risk potentially that Manly go, okay, Turbo needs a little bit more time. Let's bring him back in round three. So in that instance, are you someone that would still start with Turbo if he didn't play round one? Yes. Yeah, I'm not wasting a trade. I ran out of trades last year. I'm not wasting a trade for that. I have enough belief in my team that I could find somebody that I have on my team that I could play that will cover me. You, you're hoping that you have somebody to cover you for week two. You just got to back yourself and, uh, yeah, hope you can find someone for week one if that situation arises. Yeah, cool. I'm, I'm the opposite. I'm not starting with him. Uh, I'll happily trade down to him. If I can find the cash, I've got about 400K sitting in the bank at the moment. I could probably go straight from Turbo to Latrell, which I'm I'm kind of trying to keep that cash there just in case that happens. Go Turbo to Latrell. Latrell plays two games. He averages 100 in both games. Um, I'm more than happy to probably even just go down from Latrell to Turbo for game three, for round three, um, if I have to. I don't mind burning the trade on a guy like that. Burning a trade on a sideways trade on a mid-ranger is what I'm concerned about. But when you're burning a trade from... A guy like Latrell down to a guy like Turbo, like you're saving yourself 400K essentially from from that point. Um, I don't have a problem not starting with him as long as I'm picking him up when he starts playing. That's my priority. Um, yeah, certainly both has ways merit. Work well. Yeah, certainly has yeah. merit. I would have that situation if I could find a way with all the other guys that I want, that I believe that I have to have. Uh, if I had three or 400K in the bank, I just don't have it. I've got like $500 sitting there, so... Yeah, for sure. Hey, running skin. It's uh, <laughs> the way to start with Supercoach. I love it. Yeah, I think I think that wraps up uh, Manly. What do you think? There's nothing else you wanted to cover there, Brandon? I don't think so, mate. I think we've touched on the, the main the main points. Um, we've gone through our booms, our busts, our cheapies, our smokies. So, um, yeah. and, and obviously, look, when we come back and we do some positional analysis, which is what we're going to do in the, in the coming week or two leading up to the season, I think that's when we probably will start to touch on pods and antipods and and things like that from from teams like this who are, you know, we didn't even touch on Cherry Evans, who's one of the best halfbacks in the game at the moment. So, like, don't don't stress if we haven't touched on these players yet because we will be when it comes down the track when we start to analyse each position in a bit more depth. I, I agree. And we're both back in Tommy Turbo to, to see the year out, to play fantastically. If he was injured, the easiest play for me was hope that Ruben Garrett goes down to uh, standard winger money and then I mm-hmm. get him in back into my centre wing and just ride the wave again. It's it's not going to be a massive situation. He's 200K more than Turbo as he is at the moment. Let's hope that they switch positions. I have an extra 200K in the bank and I've got a goal-kicking fullback in my centre wing. Happy days. Sounds good to me, mate. Um, as always, thanks for hopping on with me. 
Always good to chat. Mate, we're going to continue to move through these uh, these team previews. Uh, make sure to follow, subscribe on YouTube, uh, follow on all the podcast platforms and go and hop on socials and follow Molten Fantasy Sports for all your updates as we post some shorts in there every day about different players that we've spoken about today. So if you've missed the podcast or if you want to skip through, we'll definitely uh, wrap some bits and pieces up on social media, mate. So yeah, thanks um, for hopping on. Yeah, thanks, mate. Uh, you can find me at SC underscore Matrix. But remember, if you comment on our team picker preview, you can you can still win a spot now uh, in our fifty dollars cash comp. So uh, where can we find you, Brainer? Mate, just a Brain underscore FS on Twitter and, and social media. If you search Super Coach Brain, you'll find me. Um, great point, great reminder about the competition we've got going. Um, I got we'll you. close them up at the uh, at the end of next week before the season starts. So make sure to comment on that to go in the running. Cheers, guys. We will catch you at the next team preview. Thanks. Thanks, mate.